When troubleshooting a transistor radio that doesn't play at all, one very useful piece of equipment to have is a signal injector. And this is one of the smallest ones made. It's the Mosquito by Don Bosco Electronics Inc. of Hanover, New Jersey. This device went on sale starting in 1959 and was sold at least through the 1960s, if not into the 1970s. I don't know exactly when they stopped making it. It's quite a compact device, especially for 1959. The pen clip here doubles as the on-off switch. Down is on and up is off. It'll kind of naturally turn itself off when you, you know, clip it onto your pocket. I suppose that was the era when the engineers stereotypically had pocket protectors, or at least shirts with pockets. Now the end cap here unscrews and that's where you'll find the battery which can be a little tough to remove just takes a single AAA battery it's fairly light even with the battery installed but it weighs hardly anything at all without the battery installed you can see the battery compartment on this one's nice and clean or at least I can see that the camera's not really picking up all the way down into the chamber there and here's the uh, you know, spring for the battery if you get one of these that comes without the instructions make sure you load the battery correctly you put the positive end down, and then just screw this on, and that's really all there is to it. It's a pretty simple device. The end piece does unscrew with a bit of difficulty. I'm not sure if it's intended to come off, but it does come off cleanly. And you can see there's a brass contact down in there. Now I'll show you how this device works. Here's a transistor radio that's playing just fine. It's a Zenith Royal 475. So I'll switch it on. Since this radio is working well, touching just about anywhere with the mosquito will produce a tone. Some places will produce a louder tone than others. Another thing that matters is coupling between the body of the signal tracer and the device under test. You notice it's not that loud now, but then when I touch the tuning cap frame, it gets quite loud. You can attach an alligator clip to the pocket clip here, and then attach that to circuit ground if you want. The very first place I would try using a signal injector like this on a transistor radio that just isn't picking up any stations is right here, the center tap of the volume control. If you don't get any audio on that with the volume turned all the way up, then you probably have either bad output transistors or a bad output transformer or a bad speaker or a power issue. It at least narrows down where your problems lie. You can kind of separate whether or not your problems lie in the audio amplifier stage or the preceding RF and IF stages. Another useful thing to have would be a signal tracer, which you could hook up to the same point and see if you can hear anything. And when you're done, remember to switch it off. Now here's the original box. Which came complete with an advertisement for other Don Bosco products, like this deluxe universal transducer set. This brochure has spent a long time folded, so it keeps trying to fold itself back up. You can see they're pushing the new Stetho Tracer pretty hard. That's Don Bosco's Signal Tracer. I actually do have one of those, but I don't really use it for radio uh, repair. It's kind of a interesting novelty slash collectible. It uses an earphone and there's no volume control, so if you hit some loud part of the circuit you're gonna be blasting your ears, which hurts and isn't good for your ears. You can see quite a few accessories were available for the Stetho Tracer. Here's the Vibro Tracer, which is meant for tracing vibrations. And an ad for the product I just showed you, the Mosquito. I'll try and hold the camera steady so you can uh, read that. You can just pause the video. It has a pretty long battery life, so it's not a huge deal if you forget to switch it off for a while. 
And because of the complex waveform this thing puts out, it can be used for tracing both RF and AF circuits. You have to be a bit careful hooking this up to delicate circuits though. You can see it's 50 volts peak to peak at open circuit, but with a little bit of load on it, it drops down substantially. Now I've actually got a second Don Bosco Mosquito. The one I just showed you earlier is the one that originally came with the box. Here you can see the packaging pretty much as it would have been. This foam disintegrates and uh, unfortunately also damages the printing on the barrel of the device. You can see the printing on this one is intact and that's because I bought this one loose. It didn't come with the case. On this one you can see the label is pretty trashed and that's where it was touching the uh, foam. You can see the top part there which is above the foam line is in good shape. This stuff you know, it's pretty crumbly. You can see it just breaking apart with a fairly gentle touch. I'm probably going to throw the foam out after this video because I want to store the second mosquito in there and I don't want it getting ruined by this old trashy foam. The box itself is in great shape though. The label's pretty much perfect. Now underneath the device is the registration card which the previous owner never sent in, thankfully. That warranty is uh, long expired anyway. There is a serial number on there, but I didn't see any serial number on either of the mosquitoes. I'm not sure if there's one hidden somewhere. Postage has gone up quite a bit since then. And there's the customer's copy of the warranty with the same number stamped on it. And an important notice on the back. You now own one of the finest electronic products made. You can read the rest yourself if you want. Finally at the bottom of the box here, I can get it out of there. There's a little diagram of the device. The only thing it really tells you is just how to put the battery in there and how to turn it on and off. They don't give you any kind of circuit diagram. Seems like they didn't want anyone getting in there. Thanks for watching.